Hello. In this session, we will look at an introduction to IEM groups. So, at a high level, IEM groups are nothing but these are collections of users. So, you know, at any point, if you want to maintain a group of common users, like let's say a developer group, operations group, DevOps group, cloud engineer groups, we can make use of your IEM groups for that. Now, in the last session, we looked at how you can create your users. However, um, we did not uh, assign the user to a specific group. What we did was we individually attached the permission to that specific user and uh, then we logged into that user account. Now, sometimes though what happens is uh, that can be really difficult. Like imagine you have 100 users who are going to have the same level of permissions. So instead of having to attach the permissions individually to each user, we can make use of your IAM groups, which will help you to easily manage the permissions for all these 100 users. So in this session, we will look at an introduction to IAM groups, what they are and how it works. Once again, before we start off with this session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with this. So like I said, your IAM user group is simply a collection of IAM users. So basically you can maintain a different different groups, which are nothing but your collections of IAM users who will be accessing your AWS account or your AWS resources. So basically, you know, uh, if you want to maintain a common collection of users, we can make use of your IAM groups for that. And then these IAM groups lets you specify permissions for multiple users, all right? So you can maintain a common set of permissions for all these users so that, you know, they will be doing the same work. So all you have to do is uh, modify the permissions or edit the permissions at the group level. So this can make it easier for you to manage the permissions for these users so let's say you know now you want to uh, modify some permissions for these users so instead of doing it at the user level we can do it at the group level we can go ahead and modify the permission or we can edit the permission which will be applicable to all the users in that group so that's that's the advantage of uh, making use of an iam group so it helps you to manage the permissions for multiple users at the same time so for example, let's say you have a user group, let's call it as admins, all right? So we have a, a IAM group called admins and this user group typically has administrator permissions. You know, they have kind of uh, admin level permissions. They can do almost anything they want on the AWS account. Now, any user uh, that belongs to this um, admin groups will automatically get all the permissions, all right? So all we have to do is just add these users to the group and these users will also get the same level of permissions. Now, at any point, if any new users joins your organization, right? So all you have to do is just add this user to that uh, group, all right? So let's say this user needs administrator permissions and uh, you can assign the appropriate permissions by just adding this user to the admin user group. So you don't have to uh, set the permissions at the user level to that specific user. We already have a group which has admin permissions. We can just add this user to that group. Now, let's say you also have another group, all right? So let's say you have admin groups for project A and then you have admin groups for project B. Now, this new user, is, new user is already part of your project A administrator group. Now, let's say this person changes jobs in your organization. So now they have been assigned a different role in a different project. So instead of having to edit the permissions for these users, we can simply remove this user from this group and add this user to the appropriate new user group. So because of this IAM groups, it becomes easier for us to manage the permissions for the user. So we can attach identity based policy to a user group so that all the users in that group receive the same policies permission. So, you know, we don't have to manage the permissions at the individual user level. We can manage it at the group level, which will be applicable to all the users. So all the users will get the same level of permission. So let's say we have a developer group. So we can have all the developers in the developer group who will get the same level of permission. Then we can maintain a group for the cloud engineers and we can start adding users to the cloud engineer group so that all the users will get the same level of permissions. Likewise, we can maintain an operations group 
and we can start adding users to the operations group so that all the users will get the same level of permission. So managing the permissions becomes much much easier by making use of your IAM users. Now there are some important characteristics that we will have to remember when we talk about your IAM user groups. A user group can contain many users and a user can belong to multiple user groups. So one user, so let's say we have a developer. Now the developer can belong to a developer group. Uh, they can belong to the cloud engineer group. They can also belong to the operations group at the same time. All right, so a user can be part of multiple user groups. User groups cannot be nested. They can only contain users, all right? They cannot contain user groups. Basically, so you know you can you will have to individually add the users to the groups. We cannot have a group of users, all right, attached within a group. And there's no default user group that automatically gets created when you uh, sign up or when you create your AWS account. So you will have to create a user group and uh, start assigning each user to that user group. So by default, you don't get any user group. You will have to manually create a user group and start adding users to that user group. Now, the number of uh, IAM resources and the size of IAM resources in an AWS account, such as the number of groups and the number of groups that a user can be a member of are limited. All right. So there's a limitation on how many groups a user can be part of. All right. Uh, we, you can look at the documentation that will tell you what is the limitation, but there is a limitation on how many groups the user can be part of. All right. So these are some of the important characteristics that you have to remember when we come to your IAM groups. So once again, IAM groups are nothing but these are your collections of users. So we can create a common group and we can start adding the users to these common groups and we can start managing the permissions at the group level instead of managing the permissions at the user level, which makes managing the permissions very easy. So that's your introduction to IAM uh, groups. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.